Hi, in this video we're going to take a look how to um, insert the Virus HG plugin in Appleton Live. Um, before we go into the details of uh, the tutorial, uh, I would like you to go into our website, the Virus HG product page, and check the tutorials tab and make sure that you've got the proper version of the plugin in use and how to configure the MIDI in Mac OS and Windows. Uh, this video is mainly for Mac OS and I'll be doing another video for Windows users, uh, which is a bit different, but um, uh, if this works for you in a PC platform, then it's fine. And also make sure to check out how to configure your virus for the plugin. Uh, before we go into live, I would like to point out that I am not a live expert user because I'm using Logic Pro X mainly in my productions. So I'm more uh, more experienced in uh, Logic. But um, let's get the plugin running here in uh, in live. So this is kind of a, on a new project. Obviously, you get this window, and I'm going to choose the Virus AG plugin right here and before I go to configuration on the, on the plugin side let's go to the preferences and make sure that everything is set up before we go into the details so first of all um, since I'm monitoring all of my audio right inside the door um, I'm going to go in input configuration and make sure that all of the inputs are available which I need to operate in order to get the sound from the virus. So the ports are now active and click OK and then we can go to link MIDI. Make sure that MIDI uh, control surface ports input and output are not being assigned to the virus ports. Next up, um, what I usually do is I disable tracking of the hardware ports on the input side, but instead I'm activating the tracking options for the MIDI out. So actually I can do that as well. So the synchronization goes to the virus as well. So that's it. Um, let's get the session going. And um, here on the black inside, we can go to multi settings and choose the model which we are going to connect into the plugin. So I'm choosing virus C range. And then I go to MIDI input and I choose the virus C desktop. And for the MIDI out, I choose the virus C desktop plugin is ready to go. So it, it has established a connection between the hardware and the software. Uh, the reason why MIDI interfaces shows names like this is because I've uh, done some routing on my audio MIDI uh, setup or configuration, whatever that app is called. And where I've got my MIDI interface, I've added a new external device from here and when it shows up you can double click the device and you can set a name for it and which MIDI uh, channels are being received and so on. So there's my virus C desktop it's on uh, port 12 and port 11 is my virus C oh sorry virus TI desktop. I'm using CS6X as my master keyboard, so that's on a port 9. And the reason why they show up from port 1 to port 16 is because I've got two AMT8 interfaces and they've been daisy chained together with some kind of a funny RS422 cable, um, which is not common these days. All right, moving on. Uh, if you start from a new project, uh, obviously you can just start uh, adding patches from 
from the librarian into the each of the parts. So just double click the patch name and it will be sent into the corresponding part. But in this case, I'm going to synchronize data from hardware, which is going to give me the current data from my virus C into the plugin GUI. Okay, that's done. So now I can see that all of the parts has been received into the plugin GUI. Next up, let's go to the live arrangement view and I'm going to add MIDI tracks, new MIDI tracks. And let's say this is, um, how do I rename these? Okay, virus C1, virus C2, Okay, there we go. Now if I go to output and I choose the port 12, that is going to assign the um, MIDI output from these MIDI tracks directly into the virus, which is a lot better option than sending the MIDI tracks into the plugin. And from there it goes to the hardware. Uh, the reason is our plugin is making a lot of uh, MIDI data analysis. So if we are going to send notes from the MIDI tracks in the DAW into the plugin, it's going to cause external processing inside the plugin and that's going to strain your CPU. So this is much better option to send the MIDI directly into the device itself. So let's choose the MIDI ports. And if you are uh, for some reason wanting to use this option, you go here and choose the channel where you want to assign the MIDI into. So I'm just going to choose the external and change the channels on these MIDI tracks. So now if I'm at the channel one and I want to play some notes, um, all I need to do is just play. And I'm not sure how live works in terms of um, um, tracking MIDI notes from your master keyboard or, or control surface. But um, let me have a look. Control surface. Key control. Well, there's not nothing for me to choose. Let's see if uh, choosing the. No, that doesn't work. Okay. So, if I do notes um, from this channel, I play them it goes into the hardware, or at least it should go. And if I go to a different channel, that's going to play a different part, etc, etc. So, uh, next we want to do automation in here. But before we go into automation, we need to make sure that we receive the audio from the virus into the DAW. So uh, external in, and then I'm going to choose the input. I'm choosing the RADAT because that's where my uh, virus is rooted in at on my slave computer. And then I choose monitoring input to be active. Now if I play this channel right here, hmm, obviously our master channel is not properly configured. So 
let's see. I'm going to do this routing in my UA console instead. And the virus TI as well. Right. Now if we play the part in the in live it should it should be heard in uh, in this recording. Yeah, so that's how you do it and um, uh, automation wise, um, if you can't see any parameters in your DAW, you just go to click this unfold device parameters and configure and then start to move the knobs in the, in the plugin GUI and it will be registered right there. So there's option one. And then we go to automation mode and we can see the parameter right here as well. Let's say I want to adjust the part two filter curve. All I need to do is just touch the knob and then I can do the automation right here. So it's pretty straightforward and uh, that's it. So you can start recording your virus um, into the live if you want and do automation right here on this instrument channel and you can obviously add more tracks uh, depending how many parts you want to use from the plugin so that's it that's uh that's my guide for the Ableton live uh, i hope you find it useful and um, in next session we're going to take a look how to use the librarian functions inside logic pro x so see you soon. Bye.